Welcome back to part 5 of this mini-series, Let's Make and Solve a Rubik's Cube in Unity. In the last episode, we added functionality to read the entire state of the cube. In this episode, we'll add player interactivity with the ability to rotate any side of the cube with the mouse. We're going to be picking up right where we left off, so if you missed the previous episodes, I do recommend checking them out first. Now that we know that the cube map is updating correctly, and we have lists of which faces are on which sides, we can use this information to select all the pieces in a side of the cube based on the face we click on. We're going to need a new script to handle this, and we can attach it to the cube game object. As this script is responsible for selecting which side to rotate based on the face selected, I'm going to call this the select face script. This script is going to need to access the cube state and the read cube scripts, cube state, cube state, read cube, read cube. We will also be using a single raycast emanating from the mouse and firing towards the screen. Again, we only want this to hit faces, so we will need to use the face layer mask. int layer mask equals 1 bit shift 8. In the update method, if the left mouse button is clicked, if input dot get mouse button down 0, read the current state of the cube, read cube dot read state. Then fire a raycast from the mouse towards the cube to see if a face is hit. Raycast hit, hit. The start point of the ray will be the mouse position in world units. Ray ray equals camera.main screen point to ray, and that takes in the input.mouse position. If we hit a face, if physics.raycast, which takes in the ray, out hit, 100 float, and the layer mask, save the face we hit. Game object face equals hit.collider.game object. Then we make a list of all the sides which themselves are lists of game objects. List of type list of type game object. Cube sides equals a new list of type list of type game object. Cube state dot up, cube state dot down, cube state dot left, cube state dot right, cube state dot front, and cube state dot back. If the face game object that we hit exists within a side, for each list of type game object cube side in cube sides, if the cube side dot contains the face we just clicked on, Pick it up, and by that I mean make the pieces in the side children of the central piece with a new method in the cube state class. Cube state dot pick up, and that takes in the cube side we have just identified. As we are accessing the read cube and read state scripts, we are going to need to find them in the scene. Read cube equals find object of type read cube. Cube state equals find object of type cube state. Over in the cube state script, we can add the new side method, public void pickup, and that's going to take in a list of type game object, cube side. For each game object face in cube side, we attach the parent of each face, the little cube or piece, to the parent of the fourth index, the little cube in the middle, unless it is already the fourth index as you can't parent something to itself. If face is not equal to cube side at index 4, face.transform.parent.transform.parent equals cube side at index 4.transform.parent. Start the side rotation logic. The sides can spin on six pivots, the centerpiece for each side. To handle the rotation of the pivot points, we can create a new script and attach it to these central pieces. I'll start with the front centerpiece, F, and then we'll create a new script, pivot rotation. The pivot rotation needs to know which side is rotating, so we can create a private list of type game object active side, and we also need to know what axis to rotate around, so we need a private vector 3 local forward. The amount that the side rotates can be controlled by the mouse position, private vector 3 mouse ref, and we also need to know if the mouse is currently dragging the side around, private bool dragging equals false. We'll use a public method that is called once at the start of the rotation to set the variables, and then we'll do the actual rotating in the update method. To set the variables, we can create a public void rotate, which will take in a list of game objects, the side we're rotating, then whatever side we pass this method becomes the active side. Active side equals side. And we keep track of the start position of the mouse, so we know how much to rotate the side by as the mouse moves away from the start position. Mouse ref equals input.mouseposition. We also need to know that the side is currently being dragged by the mouse. Dragging equals true. Then we create a vector to rotate around based on the local position of the piece we are rotating and the center of the cube, which we made sure was at zero in the x, y, and z. Local forward equals vector three dot zero minus side at index four dot transform dot parent dot transform dot local position. 
Now that we have a way to start the rotation, we can call the script from the pickup method in the cube state script. Once all the outer pieces are children of the centerpiece, we can get the pivot rotation script attached to that centerpiece and pass it to the side we are rotating. Cube side at index 4.transform.parent.getComponent of type pivot rotation dot rotate, and that takes in the cube side. Over in the read cube script, we can stop raycasts from being fired every frame by removing the call to the read state method from the update method. Back in the Unity editor, we can now add the pivot rotation script to each of the central pieces. Hit play and we can see that the cube map does not update until we first click the left button of the mouse. If we click on a face, all the pieces in the side we clicked on become children of the centerpiece in that side. Over in the scene view, if we were to manually rotate that centerpiece, all the children we picked up are rotating with it. If we then rotate the side to another position and head back over to the game window, the cube map does not update until we click the mouse again. However, when it does, it updates correctly. Clicking the mouse to update the state of the cube and the map is not ideal, but we also don't want the raycasts firing every frame. Instead, we can update the state and map only when a side is finished rotating. In the pivot rotation script, we can add private read cube read cube, private cube state cube state, then find the objects in the start method. Read cube equals find object of type read cube, cube state equals find object of type cube state. We also need a variable to handle how much the side should rotate based on how much the mouse has moved. Private float sensitivity equals 0.4 float. And a way to look after the rotation itself. Private vector3 rotation. To calculate the rotation, we can use a new method that is called on every frame we are dragging the side. Private void spin side that takes in a list of type game objects, the side we want to spin. First, we reset the rotation rotation equals vector3.0, then get the current mouse position minus the last mouse position, so we know how much to rotate the side. Vector3 mouse offset equals the input.mouse position minus the mouse ref. We'll start with just spinning the front side and do the others later. If the list of game objects that we pass is equal to the front list in the cube state script, if side is equal to the cube state dot front, then we will be rotating around the x axis. Rotation.x equals mouse offset dot x plus mouse offset dot y multiplied by sensitivity multiplied by minus one. We'll come back to this method in a minute. As we want to call the spin side method every frame that the side is being dragged, we can add a conditional to the update method. If we are dragging spin the active side, spin side, active side. If we release the left mouse button, set dragging to false so that we don't call the spin side method anymore. If input.getMouseButton up zero, dragging equals false. Now that we have calculated the rotation and are doing so for each frame the side is being dragged, we can update the local rotation of the transform this script is attached to. Transform.rotate, and that takes in the rotation and space.self. Then store the mouse position for the next time we call this method. Mouse ref equals input dot mouse position. Back in the read cube script, I'm going to comment out this print statement as we know that hitting the faces is working correctly. If we hit play in the editor, we can see that dragging the front side is working as well. So what's going on? When we click a face in the front, the raycasts read the cube. We check which list the face we clicked on is in, pick up the pieces, set dragging to true and rotate the side with the mouse. If we let go of the left mouse button, the side stops spinning. Clicking updates the map. We can still move the cube around with the right mouse button, but if we want to position the side at an angle and click to update the map, we get some unwanted behavior. I would rather the sides automatically moved into the closest correct position to prevent situations like this from occurring. Then, once aligned properly, we can read the state and update the map. In the pivot rotation script, we'll need some new variables for looking after this auto rotate functionality should the side be automatically rotating. Private bool auto rotating equals false. This is only true when we say so. We'll need a private quaternion, target quaternion, for the target angle we want to automatically move to and a method to handle the automatic rotation. Public void rotate to right angle. Just like the rotate script, we'll call this once to set up the variables, then do the actual rotation in the update method. To get the angle to rotate to when we let go of the mouse, we can rotate the current rotation to the nearest 90 degrees, and then set that as the target. Vector3 vec equals transform.local eula angles. Round vec to the nearest 90 degrees. Vec.x equals mathf.round, and that takes in vec.x divided by 90, and then we multiply that by 90. Vec.y equals mathf.round, vec.y divided by 90, multiplied by 90, 
and vec.z equals mathf.round, and that will take in vec.z divided by 90 multiplied by 90. Then we can set the target quaternion based on this new vector, target quaternion dot Euler angles equals vec. Now that we have an angle to rotate to, we can toggle auto rotating on. Auto rotating equals true. Back in the update method, if the left mouse button is released, we can call the rotate to right angle method to figure out the angle to rotate to. As the side will be moving on its own, it will need a rotation speed. Private float speed equals 300 float. For the auto rotation logic, we can set up a new method that can be called every frame that auto rotating is true. Private void, auto rotate. Although releasing the left mouse button turns dragging off, there may be other times when we want to call this method later, so we will make sure that dragging is turned off if auto rotating is turned on. Dragging equals false. The amount that we rotate should be based on the speed we set and delta time, the speed that the game is running. Var step equals speed times time dot delta time. Then we can use the rotate towards method to adjust the local rotation of the pivot by the step amount over time. Transform.localRotation equals quaternion.rotate towards, and that takes in the transform.localRotation, target quaternion, and the step. If we are really close to the target, we want to end the rotation, line everything up, put down the pieces we picked up, read the new state, and set auto-rotating to false. If within one degree, set angle to target angle and end the rotation. If quaternion.angle, which takes in the transform.localRotation and the target quaternion, is less than or equal to 1, transform.localRotation equals target quaternion. Unparent the little cubes, we'll do this later. Readcube.readState. Auto-rotating equals false, dragging equals false. We may not need to set dragging to be false here again, I may have gone a little overboard. Back in the update method, if we are auto-rotating, auto-rotate. Hit play in the editor, and yeah, if we let go of the side, it automatically snaps to the nearest position, and the cube map gets updated. Now, we should be able to put down the pieces we picked up so that we can pick up another side. The game should work without this, but it keeps our hierarchy nice and tidy. Public void put down, and that takes in a list of type game object little cubes, the transform pivot for each game object little cube in little cubes if little cube is not equal to little cubes at index 4, little cube dot transform dot parent dot transform dot parent equals pivot. Well, the pivot script's parent transform. I could have named that better. Back in the pivot rotation script, we can call the cube state dot put down method and pass it the list of pieces we want to put down the active side and the transform dot parent of this script, the cube transform. Now, if we hit play and rotate the front, the pieces get picked up and rotated. Then, when we let go, they automatically snap into position and get reparented to the cube transform. To handle spinning the other sides of the cube, we can use similar logic to the front. This will be up instead of front, and we will be rotating in the Y axis. However, if we test it out, we can see that the top side rotates in the wrong direction. To fix that, we can change this from minus 1 to 1, reversing the movement. That's much better. Next we can do if the side equals cubestate.down. Like cubestate.up, the rotational axis is y, but we need to spin in the opposite direction. Multiply by minus 1. For the left side, we spin about the z-axis with a positive 1. For the right side, we spin about the z-axis in the opposite direction again. I'll move the front down here, next to the back side, which also uses the x-axis and is plus 1. We are now at a stage where we can play with our cube. We can have a look around it, spin all the sides, mess it up, and try and figure out how it all goes back together. If we were building a real cube, we'd be pretty much done. However, there are some extra features that I'd like to have for this game, like shuffling and solving the cube automatically. I also don't like the way that you can see the inner cubes of the pieces. That's an easy fix. We can turn off the faces we shouldn't be able to see by ticking them off in the editor. Yeah, that's going to look a lot better. I'll quickly speed this up and do the rest. Excellent, that looks a lot better. That's it for part 5. In the next episode, we'll add automated movement and the ability to shuffle the cube at the press of a button. If you're enjoying this series, then please like, comment, and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next episode.